we need to take that CO2 out of the atmosphere that Carnegie Steel Operations put up when he was, when he was providing steel to build the United States of America. Uh, we need to take old CO2 out of the atmosphere. And the good news that I have uh, to tell you about is that we can do it. How can we release this, this CO2 without high pressure or without actually having to heat it to 1600 degrees mm. Fahrenheit? Uh, and what we, what, we, what we came upon after more than a decade worth of research, and hundreds and hundreds of trial and trials and errors was that we could release it without any energy when moist, when the resins were moist. And, uh, and this was not thought to be possible. Everyone said that what we were trying to do was thermodynamically impossible. So after over a decade of effort and investment and, uh, and many trials and many different uh, resins that were treated in many different ways, we finally came upon a way uh, to do this. Uh, and, and in fact, that's what we're doing today. Uh, so we are able to capture CO2 right out of the atmosphere and release it uh, in greenhouses without having to use a watt of energy, without having to apply a degree of heat. If you irrigate with CO2 that, so that photosynthesis continues, so you're still growing at ambient or above, you can, you can increase food production by 10 to 35 times. You can extend seasons. You can grow not one season, but two, three, even four seasons in some locations. Uh, so the future actually looks like that. The future actually looks like uh, taking landmass and multiplying what we're doing with it today in the field. This is lemna, duckweed, what you see growing on ponds. What is impressive is, is, is that eight days before this picture was taken, each of these beakers held one frond of the duckweed, one frond. So eight days later, at ambient, 400 parts per million, and at 1,500 parts per million, this is what happened to the population of lemna. Now, lemna, lemna uh, reproduces asexually, it buds. So this lemna explodes in growth, eight times growth from the standing stop uh, in a single 24-hour period. And it makes oil. So what we plan to do is to, and what we are doing in experimentation phase, we're, we're, this is not where we are with food. We know we can make food with more CO2. To actually turn this into a viable liquid fuel will take us some time. So this is, uh, I think, th this is a future uh, speech to talk about what's going to happen in the future. What will happen in the future is that duckweed will be a source of uh, biodiesel, carbon neutral biodiesel, uh, created in greenhouses, uh, and the diesel will be will be uh, will be taken out of uh, uh, the fronds of these of, of this particular. We have 60 years worth of cultivation left in our soil, 60 harvests. So we're hard up against it. We need to do something with our soil. We need to realize that nitrogen and phosphorus and all the other chemicals that, that we do to turn it into effectively a substrate for chemicals for, for plant production, we need to change that. Uh, well, I ask you to think about people in Bangladesh today who are up to their ankles in seawater, uh, young women who usually get the job to go the five miles to collect the brackish water that they use for their, for their bathing and for their drinking and for their uh, food, food uh, 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 for their cooking. Uh, these are, these are uh, people who live uh, in a sordid way. Uh, a horrible way. I think uh, that I, I, I would ask that you think through what adapt, adaptation really means. We can't adapt to climate change. It is one of the most absurd notions ever uttered by someone about to sit in the cabinet room. Uh, the fact is, we need to stave it off. Uh, 
The fact is that the people, uh, the people already being impacted have much, uh, much suffering in their lives today because of it. And, uh, and I would say this, so back to, the, to, to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Uh, he did pass through his life with an optimism that uh, people in the depths of depression, in the depths of warfare, looked to as a beacon of hope. Where did that come from? I think it came from the pain that he experienced when his, viril, his, his, his strength left him in a day. He had been with his children playing. He came home with a fever, and he woke up paralyzed. And I am sure he wept. And I know it's in the books, it's in the history, that he spent years trying to learn how to walk again. I think he looked at his metamorphosis with horror. And I think that all of the great writers, all of the great artists, have produced art with an eye to horror. They've produced it with an eye to escaping horror and living in beauty. And so we have a moment. We have a moment. And it's not long before us, when we can actually impact climate. We have to do it.